Rebels! What's up, guys? Uh, this is going to be a different kind of video than my normal videos. But this video is dedicated to and about Brian Barczyk and uh, my experiences with Brian Barczyk. I only got to meet him one time, but uh, I felt like I knew him. And what I, the way I want to say that is like, you know, we have a lot of YouTube family on here. You know, I, I refer to a lot of you guys as family. Um, I enjoy doing the lives and stuff, and I love talking to you guys. And I feel like, you know, we're, we're a thing. And uh, watching Brian Barczyk, we watched him for a long time. Me, Blue Eyes, Hayden, we have watched Brian Barczyk. He'd come on every day, 9 a.m. And uh, we would watch his vlogs. And I just, I really enjoyed watching him, enjoying his content. And I'm going to do this backwards, okay? Uh, you know, because I have no rules. You guys don't have no rules. So there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about how Brian Barczyk became who he is today. You know, some of the experience and stuff that he had that got him to where he's at with YouTube. And, uh, you know, how everybody knows who he is. But before I do that, before I talk all about how, you know, how Brian Barczyk became who he was and the good things about Brian, I want to talk about my experiences with him first off. And uh, so I'll start off, you know, me, Blue Eyes, and Hayden would watch him every day. And, uh, you know, come on 9 a.m., so a lot of times I couldn't watch him until I came home from work. But it was a thing. Like, we'd have dinner, and we'd watch Brian. And then uh, Saturdays, Sundays, wake up in the morning, I'd watch Brian. This dude vlogged every day, 9 a.m., exactly at 9 a.m. He would vlog every day. And uh, he would show animals, and he would he would explain to people things about animals, you know, reptiles that we didn't know, you know. And uh, he took the fear away from reptiles, you know, for a lot of people. And uh, not just that, but he was a very humble person. And so uh, I'll tell you the story of how I finally got to meet him. So we watched him for years before this happened, okay? So this was the first time I was ever, like, starstruck by a YouTuber. You know, I've met celebrities in the past, but a YouTuber. So we he was building the Reptarium. It's a reptile zoo in Utica, Michigan, on Van Dyke. And uh, I wanted to see this place. We were watching it being built every day, 9 a.m. We'd watch this place being built. And uh, we were so intrigued. You know, we're like, oh man, he's building this, this, uh, this enclosure today, you know, for this animal and that animal. And every one of his animals has a name. Every reptile has a name. And uh, we would get familiar with these reptiles. There was Taz. And Taz was an Argentine black and white tegu, like the tegu that we have today. Uh, there was Lucy, and she was a Burme Burmese python, and she was uh, 20 foot long. Um, there, there was just so many animals, you know. There was, uh, there was Bella. She was a rock iguana, the first big rock iguana that he ever got. He got him, he got him from his wife Lori at a reptile show, and she gave it to him. She bought it for him, and uh, he loves this lizard. Anyways, so there's a lot of reptiles, and we're watching these enclosures being built for these reptiles, for the reptile zoo. And we are just intrigued. This is so cool. So the reptile zoo opens, and uh, we want to go. We want to go, you know, and we can't find time. You know, life is so busy. We can't find time. We can't find time. So he'd been open for a few weeks. And one day I had to take a day off work because uh, Hayden was going to have his tonsils removed. We didn't know if he was going to have his tonsils removed or not. And we took him to the doctor at the time, and the doctor did a quick thing on him and said, we need to do a sleep study on Hayden before we decide to take his tonsils. So I said, okay. So this this appointment was at like 9 a.m., early, 8, 9 a.m. We went to the appointment. I missed a whole day of work. Blue Eyes missed a whole day of work. Hayden missed a whole day of school. Uh, it was on a Friday. And uh, so, you know, it's like, it's like 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. And we're done with the doctor's appointment. And we're like, well, what are we going to do? You want to go back to work or whatever? And I told Blue Eyes, I said, no. I want to drive to Michigan, and I want to see the reptile zoo. It's a Friday. He opens at like 7 o'clock p.m., and uh, I want to go. I really want to go. So we left. We didn't even come home. We left the doctor's appointment in uh, Dayton, Ohio, at Children's. And we drove all the way to Utica, Michigan. It was about 400 miles. It was a long trip. We got there, and it was, I don't know, maybe 6 o'clock. You know, we drove around finding the place and stuff. 
Well, anyway, so he opened at, I believe, 7. And there's already a line outside of the place. So I'm like, man, I hope we get in, you know. So we're in line. And I'm, like, peeking through the windows. I see Lori walking around, feeding animals and stuff. I see Noah, her son, walking around. And I see Brian. And I'm like, oh, my God, we watch this all the time. You know, like, we're here. You know, this is awesome. And uh, we, come up, we come up to the door. We're in line. He's welcoming everybody. He's standing there at the door. He's welcoming everybody in. And he's got a vlog camera. And uh, I told him. I walked up to him. I said, hey, Brian, I said, I have watched you. Me and my family have watched you for years. You know, we watch you every day. I'm a huge fan, man. I love your channel. Your channel is so awesome. And he said, man, that's great. He said, uh, you know, we talked for a few minutes. And he said, how about we get a picture? And I'm like, dude, I'd love to have a picture with you. So this was a picture that we took. And uh, I've just got my phone out, you know. And there he is. You know, he's got his arm around me. Super cool dude, you know. So there's a picture. And then... Uh, He's holding the door, you know, and Hayden's like, I want a picture because Hayden loved him, you know. So he holds the door for Hayden. There's Hayden. Look how little he was. Yeah, he was six years old. He was six years old. And uh, so he holds the door for Hayden. And blue eyes, you know, she didn't want to be on the in the picture at first, you know. So we all walk in. And uh, we're excited, you know. And he's showing us around. It was really wild because there were other people there. And uh, I don't know if it's just my story of saying, you know, we watch them all the time. But he's showing us around. He's like, check this out. Check this out. You know, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. This is so awesome. So uh, I said, thank you. You know, and he walks away. So me and Blue Eyes are staring at an aquarium. I think it's Lucy's aquarium, the, the big snake. I could be wrong. Can't remember what aquarium. And he walks right up to us with a vlog camera. And I'm like, oh, my God. Right. And he's like, hey, you know, these guys came from spring. And that video clip will be right here. So these guys drove all the way from, where did you come from? Springfield, Ohio. Oh my gosh, and how far is that? About 400 miles. About 400 miles. Oh my gosh, I am so happy that they came. Uh, I hope that you're going to have an amazing time. I'm going to do everything I can do oh, to make your stay here amazing. Uh, let me know what snakes you want to see. We'll pull some stuff out. We'll have a good time, all right? Sweet. All right. Thank you. So like we're nervous, you know, and the look on Hayden's face, the look on Hayden's face is just like, like he's so shocked. That not only are we meeting Brian Barczyk, but we are in his vlog, you know. And uh, shortly after, after this whole thing, Hayden told me, you know, that he would like to do YouTube, you know, and do video games and stuff. And that's kind of how this channel started. That's kind of how this channel started, you know. And the look in Hayden's eyes, you know, it was like, you know, maybe he'll watch my channel, you know, and have that look, you know, like when he sees himself, you know, on YouTube, which he's not on YouTube as much, you know, it's more me, but, uh, we did it together, you know, and, uh, this was a big part of my YouTube channel becoming Rebels, Reptiles, and Games was meeting Brian Barczyk and seeing him put us in a vlog. So that was a lot of fun, you know? So after that, after, you know, after he did his vlog thing, and he puts the camera away and he comes back to us again. And uh, we're over looking at Bella's cage. And that's the rock iguana. And she's up high in this in this uh, enclosure, this this big enclosure. Um, and it's big, man. This enclosure is like maybe five foot in width by like 12 foot long. And uh, it's, it's just an awesome enclosure. And this rock iguana is in there by herself. And uh, he's like, yeah, she's really cool. You know, I remember him talking to us. He's like, she's really cool. You know, da, da, da. he's like, you know, if you rub the glass a little bit, you know, she'll come up to the glass, she comes up to the glass. And he slides open the 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 glass door and he's petting her just like like a cat. And I'm like, that is so cool, man. That is so cool. And uh, Hayden is just like, you know, he's, he's trying to look up. And he can't see real well because he's short, you know. He's just a little guy at the time. You know, you guys got to remember, he's only six years old. And he's looking up, you know, and he's looking at, he's looking at Bella. And Brian says, Hayden, because we introduced ourselves to him. He says, Hayden, would you like to get up there in Bella's cage and hang out with Bella? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. So Brian brings this stepladder over, you know, and he holds Hayden's little hand, helps him with the stepladder. And I'm like, what is going on? He's like, he helps him climb into the cage. Helps him climb into the cage. So Hayden sits on a on a piece of wood and he's sitting there petting Bella. And this is the picture of Hayden inside a cage. One of the pictures of, it, of him inside a cage, petting Bella. I think this one, he's standing up. But yeah, he just sat in there for a while. Isn't that awesome? 
but look how happy he is, right? It's like it was this was like a really big deal, you know, like he got to get in Bella's cage and sit there and pet her, you know. And Brian, you know, he's keeping a good eye out, you know, to make sure, even though Bella would not bite, he's keeping an eye out to make sure, you know, nothing bad was going to happen, you know, because we've got our six-year-old son in this enclosure, you know, with with a, with a big rock iguana. So he loved that, you know, he helped him back down. We walked around a little while longer, and he says, is there anything else you guys would like to see? And Hayden was like, I'd like to see a chameleon. He's like, oh, I've got one for you. So he pulls this chameleon out, and he just lets Hayden hold it. He puts it in Hayden's hand. And Hayden's sitting there holding this Jackson Chameleon. And, like, look at the look on his face. He's just blown away. Like, not only, you know, is he holding this by himself, six years old. Not only is he holding this, but, you know, Brian Barczyk, you know, is helping him hold it and stuff, which was really cool. He was just very humble, very nice guy. This is his son, Noah. And there's blue eyes with Noah. And uh, they're, they're holding a bearded dragon. And uh, Noah is his son, and he was a lot of fun. And uh, let me see. Here's another picture. And this is Noah and Lori, uh, Brian's wife. And here's Hayden with them. And uh, just look at the look on that little boy's face. I mean, nothing but happiness, man. It was so much fun. And uh, when we first pulled up, I got another picture here. When we first pulled up... Um, this was us standing in front of the Reptarium because it was just so awesome that we watched him make this Reptarium and then we're there, you know? So uh, so I wanted to share the Reptarium story with you. There's a lot more pictures and I cannot find them. Uh, there's one where I'm holding this huge albino Burmese python on my shoulders. And uh, so this big albino Burmese python and uh, her name was Sunrise. And something very special about Sunrise. I remember watching a video when he first got her, and she was so small. And he got her from a, a reptile store. A buddy of his said, hey, there's one here. You know, you need to come get it. So he went and he got her, and she was so little. But uh, she was a snake that he got after his albino Burmese uh, python passed away. And her name was Sunshine. And uh, Sunshine was a huge snake, and she was very friendly and uh, he just took her to a show because he would take them to schools and stuff and show show kids, you know, the animals. And she, he took her to a show and uh, he brought her back. And shortly after that, she passed away. And uh, there's a video on Brian's channel where he's with Sunshine and uh, he's heartbroke. And it, it's sad. I mean, he and he shows her, you know, he shows her after she passed, you know, the snake of his that he loved so much. And uh, he was just very... Very humble and very real like that. You know, he's very real um, showing the snake, you know, and, you know, talking, you know, he was crying, you know, and he was talking about, you know, how much he cared for the snake, you know, and he was just heartbroken that she passed away. And uh, so the snake that he got later was Sunrise. And uh, Sunrise is a snake that I got to hold there. And she was, man, she's gigantic. She's so cool. I wish I could find a picture of her. Maybe I can before I'm done filming this video. But I wanted to share the reptarium story with you guys. We had so much fun, you know. And uh, I don't even know if he would remember me now. I know I've commented on a lot of his videos. He's commented back and stuff. But it was like, I felt like I knew him so well. Because we watched him for so many years, you know. And it was like, when I finally got to meet him, even though he didn't know me, he like, it was wild. It was like he took us in. Me, Blue Eyes, and Hayden. And just started showing us everything. And, uh... I remember we had to leave, you know, because we had to drive home that night, you know, and it was getting late. And uh, he was staying open to show Jurassic Park. He was going to have some friends, kids and stuff, stay and watch this movie. And we wanted to really bad, but it was getting late. We had to go home. And uh, he was talking to somebody else. And I walked over to him because we we're getting ready to leave. And I said, hey, Brian, you know, nice finally meeting you, you know. And I was like, uh, thanks, you know, thanks for showing me everything. And he said, no problem, brother. And he gave me a hug. You know, he gave me a hug. It's just the type of person he was. He gave me a hug, you know, and uh, we all said goodbye, you know, and that's the last time I got to see him. And that was like eight years ago. Um, every since I have followed his vlogs, I've commented on his videos, but it's wild. Like we have watched him, you know, and we've watched him since he was young, you know, and and to see to see this toll on his life with cancer, you know, and uh, and what all evolved from that, you know, was really rough. But I'm I'm trying not to have this as like a downer stream. I want to talk about him. I want to I want to share this with you guys because he was a huge inspiration for my YouTube channel 
And I believe that if you guys watch some of his early videos and, you know, up until now, you know, before he got sick, um, I'm sure he'd be a huge inspiration for any of you YouTube creators that are watching today. Because, hey guys, I'm editing this video right now and I wanted to say something right here in this spot. Um, he was also a gigantic inspiration while having cancer. I mean, he he dealt with cancer, you know, like a soldier and uh, he did not let it get him down. And if you watch, you know, from where he had cancer on, it's like he's a very tough person. So uh, a lot of respect, a lot of respect I have for Brian Barczyk. But I just wanted to throw that in here as I was editing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to show you guys some of the beginning. And uh, it's going to start off where I'm going to show you guys uh, Snake Bites TV, which is the first thing that he started. And then it's going to show you guys where he was on the Discovery Channel. And uh, where he he was the first. So he was a ball python breeder. And he was the first to create a scaleless ball python to breed that. No scales. And uh, he was the first to ever do that. And he's had other breeds since that he was the first of. And uh, how he wanted to how he wanted to start doing vlogs. And I just want to kind of give you guys a little bit of a history. If you guys don't know Brian Barczyk, you guys will after this video. So I appreciate it, guys. Let's start let's start some of these uh, little videos that I have ready for this video. Thanks. Hey Brian from Snake Bites here. Today I'm gonna to share with you the tools that I think you need to be a successful snake breeder. And later in the show, I'm gonna bring you guys along on what could I'm be one of the most exciting snake clutches running that the third largest has ever, ever cut in the world with snake over bites. 30 dollars snakes. Crap, it's I it! Oh my god! I started when I was 18 years old in the suburb of Detroit, Michigan, which is where you want to go and find a snake farm. But I've been obsessed with snakes ever since I was 2 years old. I've been one of the most successful snakes in the world. I really look at the dentist's and medical research. I don't know if the biggest thing to that. I came to Australia because I had an incredible opportunity to expand my business. There's a demand for Australian venom, but there's no extra of live animals. So the only other way you can get it is to export it itself. That's what I'm here to do. After this huge accomplishment, he ended up being on Discovery snakes, Channel running the for third Venom largest Hunters. collection of them in the world with over 30,000 snakes. My company's name is BHB Reptiles. I started it when I was 18 years old in a suburb of Detroit, Michigan, which is where you wouldn't normally find a snake farm, but I've been obsessed with snakes ever since I was two years old. I've been one of the most successful snake breeders in the world. I really look at the venom side of things and the medical research. I want to be the biggest name in that field. I came to Australia because I had an incredible opportunity to expand my business. There's a demand for Australian venom, but there's no export of live animals. So the only other way you can get it is to export the venom itself. That's what I'm here to do. So after Venom Hunters on the Discovery Channel, um, he was trying to do his own show on Discovery Channel. And something happened. I'm not sure what happened for sure. But he ended up not being able to do his own program on Discovery Channel. And he decided, why not? Go back to YouTube, but instead of doing Snake Bites TV, let's talk about breeding snakes and how to breed snakes, how to take care of ball pythons and stuff, and do a daily vlog. Because this guy was very interesting, and he explored everywhere, so he started his vlog. Welcome to the vlog channel. You know, I've been thinking about doing vlogs for probably the last year or two to be honest with you because you know for you guys that watch me on snake bites and other animal bites type, type stuff and even discovery channel um you know sometimes you don't see all the other things i've got going on you know obviously i run bhb but i also have all these other things in my life you know i've tried to start up new businesses i run around travel to animal adventures so i thought to myself why not let you guys come into my world all the time uh as opposed to just a produced show once a week where it's just really me and you guys and you see who i am you know get a chance to you know see Lori, my wife my my house uh the things i'm traveling to like another thing i really enjoyed about brian is he had no rules. He really did because he would come home with a with a reptile, you know. And when I say home, I'm talking about the reptarium, you know, and uh, BHB. And it would be some kind of reptile, reptile he always wanted. 
and he wouldn't ask Lori. He would just come home with it, you know? And uh, she'd be like, Brian, you know, like, you know, do we have to have this? But he would just do, he would do his own thing, you know? He's a free, free-willed spirit. And I thought it was funny on this video where he's talking about doing a vlog at the beginning of his first vlog video. And then he's driving home and he's kind of like asking Lori for permission, but he's filming it already. It's already there. So this is the other part where he's driving home. I think about my ride home every day. So guys, it's finally here. A little bit of time to relax and kind of hang out with Lori here. So, uh, Lauren, what do you think? Good idea to vlog our life? Roar! Roar! Huh? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> well, you guys will get a chance to see uh, just kind of the day-to-day -day grind. I hope so after it was decided that he was going to make vlogs, um, he did a lot of vlogs. So he, like, never missed a day. I mean, it was so rare that he would miss a day. I mean... I I can maybe count on one hand how many times he missed a vlog all these years that he's been doing them. I mean, I, I would guess, I'm not for sure, but I would guess at least 12 years of straight vlogs. And uh, every day at 9 a.m. he'd do a vlog. And a lot of the vlogs had a lot to do with breeding ball pythons. And uh, like, you know, like when he made that scaleless ball python, it was from different breeds of ball pythons. And he would buy them. He would buy them imported from Africa. And uh, he would breed these, any any ball python that he would find that would have a, a slim difference, you know, in pattern or anything, he would get that ball python, he would breed it with another ball python, and those would be het. And het just meant that it was close to this one ball python that they've created. Um, he has so many different names. He even has a ball python named Lori. It's a Lori uh, breed. And if he bred that one with another one, it and and this one was like a baby baby of one of the Lori ones. It was het to be Lori again. And that's just an example. Same thing with scaleless uh, albino. He made albino ball pythons, yellow ball pythons. And uh, he taught a lot of people about totes. You know, a lot of people, you know, he had, he had some hate there for a little while because he showed the totes that all the ball pythons would be bred in and they'd live in. And people would say, you know, uh, well, that's not a that's not enough room for that reptile to live in those totes. Well, the truth is, you know, he had went to Africa and he had showed where there were ball pythons, and they piled themselves in little dirt holes, and those little dirt holes were smaller than the totes that he used, and th they're called ball pythons for a reason. You know, they they uh, they they turn into like a little ball. You know, like they they don't lay straight. Well, they curl into like a little ball, and they would get in those dirt piles. So actually, the totes were a really cool idea, you know, to be able to keep an eye on them, be able to keep them fed, watered, you know, uh, at the right temperature. And uh, I just learned so much about snakes and so much about other reptiles. And uh, it, was, it was just fun to watch. He was so much fun to watch. And he had so much knowledge. And he was such an entrepreneur. It was like he was always reaching for that next. Later on, he started breeding Burmese pythons. Then he even ended up breeding his anacondas had anaconda babies. Uh, Lucy, the big Burmese python that you see that he's feeding the rabbit to in a video, uh, he bred her. And it's like, this guy is a trip. But he didn't start breeding those bigger animals like that until he started the reptarium. And uh, this was just such a huge thing to do, is build this reptile zoo. And he was so passionate about doing it. And uh, we watched him build the whole thing, like I said earlier. And we showed up, you know, and got to see it, you know. But I wanted to show you guys a couple pictures of the outside of it. So check these out. Every part of this build, he talked about, you know, like the pillars there. I remember when they put the pillars up. The way it looked from the air. The way it looked when it was lit up at night. And like the putting the lights. I mean, everything that he did to build the Reptarium, he showed on his videos was amazing he literally shared everything in the vlogs um he had some battles with depression um some battles with anxiety and um he shared everything you know and it was like you really knew brian barcheck when you watched these vlogs and uh he was like i said he was an entrepreneur he always wanted to go that extra mile so after he did the reptarium and that reptarium was so successful 
that there's a piece of property in front of the Reptarium across the street. I don't know if it's an old grocery store, something. It was very gigantic, man. I mean, this place, this place was big, um, almost like a small factory, maybe. And uh, he bought that piece of property, and there it was. He wanted to build an aquarium. He wanted to build an aquarium, move some of his reptiles over there too, and this was just going to be awesome, amazing. So he put everything he had into it. You know, uh, he he even said, you know, like every cent he had, he put into this thing to make this possible. And it was looking beautiful, you know. And uh, a little while after he started really working on this thing and was getting pretty far, he found out that he had cancer, pancreatic cancer. And uh, believe it or not, he didn't let it stop him. He didn't let it stop him. I mean, to me, if it was me, maybe I would have been like, you know what, I, I can't do this. You know, I can't do the aquarium. I'll just keep the reptarium. But he, no. Nothing was going to stop this man from his dreams and his dreams for his family, you know, to succeed after he was gone. And uh, so he started building this aquarium and uh, ended up coming up with a name, the Legacy Aquarium. And this aquarium is looking beautiful. I want to show you guys some pictures of what it looks like so far. So on the inside, he's going to have these massive aquariums. And there's actually a pond out front now with koi fish in it, with a bridge that you walk over. And it's just beautiful. And he wanted it to look really beautiful as you drive by so it would catch your eye. But this is it, the legacy. Well, Rebels, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a different kind of video than I usually do. But uh, Brian Barczyk and his memory means a lot to me. And... Uh, He's not doing well at all. Hospice is involved, and he may only have a couple days left. And, uh, man, I mean, he's really he's really been an inspiration to me and my channel. And I just wanted to share him with you guys, you guys that might not know of him. And uh, he could be a great inspiration to you guys as well because his memory will always live through YouTube. You know, and I say that all the time, you know, that the videos I make, you know, I want my grandchildren to see. I want my kids to see, you know, and it'll be like I'm always here, you know. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know that here soon when that aquarium is made, me, Blue Eyes, and Hayden are going to go. And we're going to visit it. And I'm going to take a banger video for you guys. And uh, I can't wait to do it. Can't wait to share it with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I also want to say that the video portions of Brian Barcheck that I showed, I do not own the rights to any of those. And I apologize if I've upset anybody showing those clips that do not belong to me. Um, but this video is so important to me. Brian was so important to me that I don't care if I get a copyright. I don't care if any of that stuff happens. I just wanted to show my friends and family from YouTube, a friend of mine from the reptile end of Rebels, Reptiles, and Games. And I wanted to share them with you guys in the toy community. And I hope you guys subscribe to him. Check him out. I mean, he, he's a beautiful soul. And you'll learn a lot, you know, about, about being an entrepreneur because he just, he never stopped. His drive was so strong. So I just want to share that with you guys, and I appreciate you guys watching. I love you all. Till next time, have fun collecting, and Rebels No Rules, and check out Brian if you would. I would love for you guys to. Thank you. God bless, guys.